John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to talk a little bit about the PCV system, the positive crankcase ventilation system, and the evaporative loss system, the ELC, the evaporative loss control system. So starting in 1970, we have a, we have a charcoal canister like this, and by about 78, we end up with two of them because the federal government said one wasn't enough. In 1973 and onwards, they added the anti-run-on valve so that the car shuts off the moment you snap the key off. We'll explain this. So let's just watch what happens to the air when the engine is running, right? So air enters the bottom, I haven't got this hose installed, but this goes on the bottom of the anti-run-on valve, okay? So air, fresh air enters this, comes through the anti-run-on valve, which is open, as long as the key is on, goes through the charcoal canister, goes up through the charcoal canister and out here and is drawn into the valve cover through a 5 ths hole. Now this is a pretty good size um, piece of, of tubing here, half inch, but in the end of it, there's only a 5 ths hole. Then, after circulating through the engine, it comes up out of here off the front tappet inspection cover and goes into what I've got here, which is the Smith's PCV valve. Normally, this would go to, into a plastic Y piece and fit into each of the carburetors but these are earlier carburetors. These are AUD 52s. So these don't have the provision for that. And I wanna make sure that the car runs clean, which it will. So again, fresh air goes in through here, into the engine, out of the engine, into the intake manifold and gets burned up. Additionally, hooked to the charcoal canister is the gas tank. One of our next videos is gonna be the gas tank with, with this device on the inside of it. So it used to be, you know, prior to 1970, that when you filled up the tank and the gasoline expanded when you were sitting in a hot parking lot in August, that the fumes would come out, spill out someplace. Sometimes I remember seeing cars, you know, with gasoline dripping out of the back of them all evaporating into the atmosphere. So in 1970, that stopped. So now the gasoline tank is vented through here. So any fumes that are coming off the top of the tank um, will get trapped in the charcoal, the, the uh, hydrocarbons, the raw gasoline, will get trapped in the, hydro, in the charcoal. On the other hand, when the, when the tank is being emptied through use of the fuel pump when you're driving down the road and you're taking, in, incremental amounts of gasoline out, air is able to go back into the tank through here. So this is a connection to the gas tank. Um, that's straightforward. Then the other connection here we have goes across the back of the bonnet. And let me come around to the other side here and explain what, what's going to happen. I'm going to hook these together and put a T in here and bring that T over to here so that the float bowls are also connected to the charcoal canister. Now when you shut the car off, the gasoline in the float bowls heats up because of all the extra heat in the engine and cooling fan stops. So the gasoline expands, what comes out of the vents, air fuel, Government doesn't want unburned hydrocarbons in the atmosphere, so they have to be trapped. So we're gonna trap them by sending them over here to the charcoal canister. The, car, the government doesn't want the car to run on when you turn the key off. Earlier MGs, ba bum ba ba bum ba ba bum diesel. So the anti-run-on valve over here operates only when the key is off and when you have oil pressure, here's the oil pressure switch, and it's a slate circuit gray, which, which uh, is keyed so that when the key is off, you have power available at the switch. 
if you ground the switch because you've got oil pressure, then the switch operates. When would the key be off and you'd have oil pressure? When would that condition be, when would that happen? Right as you turn the key off, you turn, you come down to a stop, turn the key off, engine's still spinning a little bit, you still got oil pressure, that valve closes and stops the free movement of air through here into the engine. Additionally, it takes a vacuum line from here right over to the intake manifold. There's a fitting on the intake manifold here, which is wrong, it's not a real one, but that's what's in there. Anyway, we'll take inlet manifold vacuum, and that will evacuate the charcoal canister, and it will also bring that vacuum over and put that vacuum on top of the gasoline in the float bowls, so we're pulling up on the gasoline so the air going through the throat can no longer suck the gasoline out of the float chambers because there's a vacuum on top of it. Therefore, the car stops dead because it starves for fuel. It's a wonderful system. If it's not working on your car, 73 through 80, make it work. You can't easily make it work with a Weber. I've tried, I, I did it once, took a lot of time because the Weber float bowl isn't, um, isn't vented in a way that you could hook this up. If it was, oh my gosh, easy, easy schmeasy. Anyway, so that's it. Anti-run-on valve, 1973 through 1980. It's a good system, don't take it off. It shuts the car right off when you want. Hey, take a look at this engine bay here. I've been working on this. Oh my gosh, what a project. So this is my daughter's car. I'm gonna pass in front of the camera. Um, bad technique. And uh, I've got the air conditioner compressor fitted down here and the alternator fitted up here. Oh my gosh, what a lot of fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. But, cause you gotta get every belt in line. If it's offset, of course, it's gonna wear the belt prematurely and I'm just at the point now that I'm starting to run the air conditioner hoses but we didn't come to talk about that we came to talk about the positive crankcase ventilation system starting in 1964 because of the California market um, and then they dropped that Smith's PCV valve in 1969 and went to the ventilated HS4 carburetors real nice system anyway thanks so much Visit my website, University Motors LTD. Go on the top ribbon and it says join our newsletter. Join our newsletter. Um, read, there's resources, there's all kinds of stuff. There's a PayPal button there if you wanna press that. Thank you very much. Anyway, we'll look forward to seeing you at our next video when we're gonna talk about gas tanks. Safety fast. So we cut the tops off them so we can see what's inside. Um, it's really, really dangerous. Don't ever work with a torch around a gas tank.